God's blessings on the faithful and the obedient in Christ Jesus. May the God's, may God's spirit be upon those who are striving to enter or trying to spend forever with God. May God's spirit cleanse from all unrighteousness so that you can continue to endure to the end so that you know you have assurance with the Father in heaven. In Jesus' name, I'm Brother Joseph Herbert. I want to get on here to talk about, again, the meaning of life. Um, my last video, I touched on a few things in the Word of God um, and explained that apart from Jesus Christ, man cannot know the meaning of life. Man does not understand life apart from salvation in Jesus, apart from being born again. And so Paul, the apostle says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm going to get right to it because man apart from Jesus Christ does not understand life, does not understand the ways of life. The word of God says in Ecclesiastes, he has made everything beautiful in his time and he has set the world in the heart so that no man knows the work that God makes from the beginning to the end. That's a very profound verse from the preacher, King Solomon, the third king of Israel, who made mention. So you cannot figure God out. You can't outthink God. His ways are unsearchable. And so you need to understand here you are created for a purpose. And so I want to read this verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. This is Paul by the Holy Spirit saying, saying in verse 13, he says, uh, matter of fact, verse 14, it says, the natural, but the natural man, meaning those who are not converted, those who are not born again, the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God, meaning you you, know, you can't a man part from being born again. If they ever if they was to pick up a Bible, they're not going to understand the word of God because the word of God is for those who are being transformed and renewed in the glory of God. You are a new creature if you are born again. So God gives you the mysteries. He gives you the wisdom to walk in the newness of life, the newness of life in the body that God has redeemed you in. And you are walking as a saved person. The natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God for they are what foolishness to him. That's what it says. So the things of God. And depending on how your heart receives truth. Now, Jesus Christ described that as the parable of the sower or in the parable of the sower. He describes the good, the grounds, the different grounds and the grounds represent the heart. Your, if your heart is like the ground that the seed fell by the wayside, that means you hear the word, but then the things that you love doing or the things that you take pleasure in this life or takes up your time, it, it, it the, the, the devil comes and snatches the word from you. And so, and then there's the, the, the one with the thorns. If the seed falls on thorny ground or thorny or thorny grounds, um, the thorns represent idols in your life. You may... It may be a celebrity, it may be a rapper, it may be an R&B artist, it may be a movie star, whoever, or maybe your own family or even yourself. It can choke the word. Arrogance, pride, lust, they choke the word. Money can be an idol, material can be an idol. You desire things in this life, it can choke the word, meaning it will choke the truth you won't want to receive truth because you love to be who you are instead of who God chosen you to be or called you to be because you got to be called first to be and to walk in the calling 
to know that you are chosen. The word of God says, it's Paul again by the Holy Ghost. He says, um, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of, you, of God that is in Christ Jesus. So when you answer the calling, God, it, the Father has drawn you close to the Son that you may choose the newness of life, life abundantly, and it is granted to you. Life more abundantly, and that is describing eternal life. Eternal life is life not of this world. Eternal life, God gives the believer when man repents and turns from his ways, his own understanding, his own lifestyle, and turns to Christ Jesus for redemption, for renewal of the soul and mind. The word of God, Paul, again, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, says, Be not conformed to this world, meaning do not be like the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So there's a journey that the man of God must take after he's saved. He can't just say that, okay, I've been baptized and now I'm saying, now I'm saved and that's it. No, it doesn't just, it doesn't just, it's not just the Bible and reading it. It's not just going to church and, and, and you know, all these things are good for the walk of a Christian. All these things are beneficial for the walk of the Christian. It's your faith. By faith, you walk in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is, he is the resurrection. He is the life that we walk in. He's, if you are saved, Christ is in you along with the Father. The Father is the creator of all things. Yes, Christ Jesus was with the Father from the beginning. The word of God says he is from everlasting Meaning he has always existed. That's why it says he is the beginning and the end, the first and the last, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. So conversion, conversion, the evidence of conversion. What is the evidence of your conversion if you say that you are saved? Your productivity, meaning your fruit, the fruit that you should be bearing. A good tree cannot bear corrupt fruit, meaning you won't see an orange tree bearing rotten apples. You won't see a, a fig tree bearing uh, rotten oranges. You won't see it. A good tree bring, brings forth good fruit. So the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. That's what it says in Proverbs chapter 11, I believe. So, the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Meaning, the, the gospel. The gospel, a man that loves this life, loves the pleasures of this world, depending on philosophy, depending on... The psychiatrist, depending on the career, depending on his own loving life. There are many examples. I'm thinking about Luke chapter 16, the rich man of Lazarus. And I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna go there, but you have to understand something here. The, this life is temporary. This world is gonna perish when Christ returns. This world is gonna be burnt up. Because when Christ comes, there comes his wrath on those who are not born again. Yes, it's going to be a, a bad day for the unbeliever. For the believer, for those who are truly born again, yes, we're going to meet Jesus in, this, in the air. Or if you died in righteousness as a Christian, you will be resurrected and in the presence of Jesus Christ. And you're going to come back on the earth. You're going to come back on the earth and it will be a new heaven and a new earth. So the natural man does not understand that truth. 
natural man, apart from being born again, depends, like I said, the depends on the college life, depends on the government and the, <coughs> excuse me, the military. Yes, but the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned, meaning they are unqualified to understand spiritual matters. Yes, but he that is, listen, I love verse 15. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 15 says, but he that is spiritual, meaning the born again, it says, he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself, the born again, himself is judge of no man, meaning nobody, the, the, nobody that is not born again cannot rightly judge the man of God. It, especially if the man of God is obeying the Father and obeying the Son by faith. The Word of God says the just will live by faith. So the just, those who are justified, when man becomes born again, he is justified, reconciled to the Father because of what Christ and his life on the planet he is the example of whom we will follow, whom sh we should follow. You should follow Jesus Christ. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. Just getting under the weather by prayer and supplication, trusting in the Lord. So yeah, you have these, these different... Um, expoundings on how what man that is natural who who is not saved how they think man apart from being born again does not fear god so they do evil they do bad things they walk in the evil way the forward mouth they love the forward meaning that is a biblical definition forward meaning Perverse, forward meaning, speaking what you um, you should not and turning others uh, because of the pride in it, turning others from doing right or doing good. You have a forward mouth and that is, you know, that's not the word. That's not the will of God for a man who is born. You are made in God's image and his likeness. The meaning of life. What is the meaning of life? If I were ask you that, will you be able to answer that? The meaning of life, and I posted this yesterday because I did a video about it. But the thing about it is that you don't understand life if you're not saved. So the meaning of life, I remember I watched a movie. This was in the 2000s. It was an ungodly movie and it was two rappers in the, that played in this movie and... They was in the car. They were like drug dealers. There was the whole movie was wicked. So there was drug dealers, and there was riding in the car. And one of the rappers, who actor in the movie, asked this other rapper, um, "What do you know the meaning of life?" As they are uh, smoking marijuana in the car, do you know the meaning of life? The other one said, "Yes, it's money, dog." That's what he said, and. So when he said that in the movie, and this is, again, this is when I was not saved. I wasn't saved yet. So when he said that, I knew that was not true. But the fact that this thing is in the movie, it is imparting pride and rebellion to those who love money, those who love to do violence, those who love to do evil. And you are in the sight of God. Everyone, everything, everything that exists is in the sight of God. So you don't, you can't hide from God. So Hebrews chapter 4, let me read this real fast. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4 says this, and this is right after the one of the most uh, memorable verses that for the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and of spirit, 
of joint and of the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So the word of God knows, it discerns. You can't uh, outthink God's word. His word is unsearchable. God is unsearchable. The very next verse says, neither is there any creature that is not manifested or manifest or revealed in his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him whom, uh, with whom he, we have to do. All things are naked and open to God Almighty. And the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is now omnipresent. He knows he's God manifest in the flesh, who was alive, then he was dead. Behold, he's alive forevermore. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. So what is the meaning of life? So I did say I was going to go to Luke chapter 16. There are people, there are many people who who are in the word of God, who are in God's word as an example did not understand the meaning of life and there was consequences in their death. So uh, yesterday I talked about Simon the sorcerer who is an example of one who did not understand life and briefly I'm going to go through it. Um, I'm not going to read it, but I, you know, reading the word of God so much, you, the words, the word of God, God's word, God himself puts doctrine for you to apply, for you to practice, for you to walk in, so you know doctrine. So, Simon the Sorcerer, he was known as bewitching people because the people thought he was some great one. And then he hears Philip, the evangelist, preach the gospel. Simon the Sorcerer gets paid. Uh, I'm sorry, gets saved. <laughs> he gets paid. He gets saved. And he did not understand life before he was saved. Re reason why I say that because he used sorcery. He's he Simon the sorcerer. He thinks as one who practices witchcraft. He practiced sorcery, bewitching the people, meaning he deceived the people, and everyone thought he was some person from God. Everyone thought he was a great one. Philip preached the gospel. And now he believes, now Simon the sorcerer believes, he's converted, and then he sees Peter and John, these are the apostles, Peter and John lay hands on people, and they receive the Holy Ghost. So Simon the sorcerer, who is now saved, sees this miraculous work here, and it's attracted to him because it kind of resembles, it resembles power. And it is power because it's not fake power. This is real power that they were doing. They received the Holy Ghost by the laying on of hands. They received the Holy Ghost by the laying on of hands. Now, guess what? Simon the sorcerer, <coughs> excuse me, Simon the sorcerer, he wants this power. He's a babe. He's a babe. He's saved. He's brand new and he's saved. And so he wants this power. But his carnal mind, he asked when a person gets saved, it's another thing I mentioned. When a person gets saved, he's a baby all over again. He's what the word of God calls a babe. So he has to learn life again. But through the perspective of God, through the perspective of Jesus Christ. Through this perspective of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is to guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit is to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And it says that in John chapter 15. So Simon the sorcerer, he got saved. Again, I may mention. So he sees uh, John and Peter pr uh, pretty much more than more of Peter laying hands on them, on people, and they receive the Holy Ghost. The miraculous, <coughs> excuse me, miraculous works are being done in Simon the Sorcerer's eyes. He wants this power. And what he says to Peter, 
Give, give me this power. I, will per, I want to purchase the Holy Ghost. I want to buy the Holy Ghost. I paraphrase that because that's what is explaining. He wants to buy the Holy Ghost so he can lay hands on people and they receive the Holy Ghost. And then Peter sharply rebukes him. He sharply rebukes him. He didn't care if he just got saved a day prior or whenever it was a sh it was not that long ago that Simon the sorcerer got saved Peter rebuked him sharply he says your money perishes what do he say I'm gonna come back to Hebrews chapter 4 well I just read that so I don't need to go there so in uh, Acts chapter 8 what did Peter say Peter says to him in verse 20 your money perish with you because you have thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. So he's thinking carnal. He's thinking, he still thinks like a sorcerer. He still thinks like a witch. He still thinks like a man who does not understand life. Again, the Holy Ghost leads you by God Almighty to apply the newness of life of obedience and faith. So he didn't understand life. He still thinks like a sorcerer. And Peter rebukes him sharply. So sharp. He says, your money perishes with you because you have thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter. For they, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Now he's telling him the truth. He may, I don't know. If, now the word of God doesn't say that he says it gently. I don't even know if Peter knew that he just got saved, but it needed to be said. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right with right in the sight of God. <clears throat> he says, repent, therefore, of this, your wickedness, and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. And then he says, for I perceive that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And then Simon the source of fear, he, he feels uh, the trembling and the fear of the Lord through what Peter said. And when he says back to Peter, he answers Simon, then answers Simon and says, pray to the Lord for me that none of these things which you have spoken come upon me. So he he says, pray to the Lord for me. So that goes to show you he didn't know how to pray yet. You know, men of God always to pray. The word of God says, Cease prayer without season. But he didn't know how to pray yet. He's a brand new Christian. He's a brand new believer. And Peter rebukes him sharply. But he needed that rebuke. The Holy Ghost in Peter rebuked him. He needed the, he needed the pricking to remove all foolishness because God is not mocked. To ask for something so foolish is mockery to God. And it goes to show you also that the Holy Ghost is not to be wrongfully spoken of. That's why Jesus rebukes the Pharisees when they said, when, it, when Jesus is casting out devils. And the Pharisees want to come and say that, oh, he cast out devils by the prince of Beelzebub. This, he, they blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ says, you, you can, and I'm paraphrasing, you can speak against the Son, Jesus Christ, and, or you can speak against God. But to speak against the Holy Ghost, there will be no forgiveness in this life, nor the life to come. So when you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, that is a, a eternal danger there. There is, there is a, there, you cannot do that. You just cannot do that. And so Peter is demonstrating that you, you your money perishes. He tells Simon the sorcerer, you, 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 you sound foolish by asking this to purchase or to buy the Holy Ghost so that you can lay hands on those so they can receive the Holy Ghost. Peter walked with Jesus Christ. Peter walked with the Lord three years. So he he's seen Many miracle, many many miracles, many wonderful works. He's seen the casting out of devils. Jesus Christ, along with the twelve, 
before Judas Iscariot, Iscariot hangs himself, uh, Peter walked with Jesus. He, he received power from God Almighty Jesus Christ to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt them because they trust, they, they, they receive power. So Peter walked with Jesus. Peter was the same one that denied Jesus three times. And then Christ Jesus, the resurrected Christ Jesus restores him. So for Peter to hear something foolish, that foolish, he had to rebuke Simon the Sorcerer very sharply. And so Simon the Sorcerer is an example of one who did not understand life. And so I, I did say I was going to go to Luke chapter 16, the, the rich man and Lazarus, which is, okay, so the rich man did not understand life as well. The meaning of life is to submit to God. The meaning of life is to have God as your father. Um, God, it, God will say, you will be my son and and we will be his people. That is the meaning of life. There's many answers to this to this uh, statement or question. What is the meaning of life? Again, those who are not born again do, do not understand life. So they do what they want to do. They do what they want to do. So this is Luke chapter 16. And so in verse starting in verse 19 so it says Jesus Christ the Lord speaks as in, saying there was a certain rich man with uh, which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day and, you know so he's living he was flourishing in his lifestyle because he was that's why he's called the rich man the, the word of God gave him no name this is an example of one who does not understand life and may have grown to understand that it's about the riches. It's about material wealth. It's about living your best life now. That's, that's what he's thinking here. So this the rich man did not understand life. And then it says, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the, with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked the sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was, a <coughs> was buried. So Abraham's bosom was paradise. Abraham's bosom was a place of paradise where all the righteous men in the old covenant, when they died, and that's where they resided until Christ defeated sin and death and destroyed the works of the devil on the, on the cross. Innocent blood was shed, and then he heals up the ghost and goes into the belly of the, of the earth to set the captives free. The captives, who were the captives? Those who were in Abraham's bosom, those who died in righteousness from the Old Testament, from Samuel to Ezekiel to Isaiah, Jeremiah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Solomon, King David especially. So these are righteous men that died and in Abraham's bosom. So the rich man and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came, uh, came and licked the sores, licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. So the rich man, why he was rich, he it describes his lifestyle by calling him by saying he's just he's a rich man. It don't describe that he lived righteously. It just says he's, he's rich. He was a rich man. So there's pride and arrogance in the heart of the rich man. Why do I say that? How do I discern that? 
pride and arrogance describes that you love money, you love riches, you don't love your neighbor as yourself, and you definitely do not love God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength because you don't know God and you don't understand life. So the rich man, what did he do? He, it's, uh, Jesus Christ says, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. We just to find that where, where Abraham's bosom is. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, that's what the rich man went to. In hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and sees Abraham afar off. And Lazarus in his bosom. He saw God gave him the ability to see. Now, the way hell is described in other places of the word of God describes gross darkness Gross darkness, meaning darkness that is able to be felt, just like one of the plagues of the Lord when Moses, the Lord commanded Moses to put to set Egypt at darkness, and it says it was gross darkness, darkness that it can be felt. That's the that's what it is in hell. It's a it, you're in darkness, complete darkness that can be felt. Many many darkness is tangible; it can be felt. And so not only you're feeling darkness, but you're feeling the torment. So Lazarus, the Lord, like I said, the Lord gave him the ability to see, uh, not, not Lazarus, I'm sorry, the rich man, God gave the rich man the capability to see Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. And in hell, he lift up his eyes being in torments and sees Abraham afar off and Lazarus is in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. Now that describes there is no water in hell. There is no comfort in hell. There is no pleasure in hell. Just torment, gross darkness. And you're there for all eternity until Christ comes. And then you have your part in a lake that burns with fire and brimstone. Yes. So, but Abraham said, he says, he calls him son. He says, son, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and you are tormented. He says in your lifetime. So, in his lifetime, that is describing he did not understand life. He did not know the meaning of life. He thought the meaning of life was himself being glorified in his riches, in his material to live and flourish in his, his riches and wealth. And then so the beggar, Lazarus, he, he, was, he was a beggar. He did not. Uh, he did not treat the poor man, the beggar Lazarus, as he ought to treat him. So, let me see, but Abraham's, I, read, I just read that. Okay, verse 26. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fix, meaning there is a cat, uh, um, a cat, a chasm, a chasm. Yeah, that's, that's describing a deep, dark pit, deep, and dark that you cannot cross over. So again, the Lord gave the rich man the ability to see Lazarus and Abraham in Abraham's bosom, to see them in treated in the goodness of God in Abraham's bosom while uh, the rich man was in torments. So and beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fit so that they which would pass from here to you cannot Neither can they pass to us that will come for come from there. Verse 27. Then he said, I pray you, therefore, father, that you would send him to my father's house. He says, I pray you. So he's now the rich man is begging. Now the rich man is. Um, uh, it doesn't describe it is when he says, I pray you. He's not on his. It doesn't describe that he's on his hands and knees. He may have been. Being in torments, but God, when a person, uh, when I believe a person, 
that is in hell that is praying, it's too late for them. So the, God is not going to hear that. You know, there is no there is no hope for after the person dies and goes to hell. There is no hope for that person. Then he said, I pray you, therefore, Father Abraham, that you would send him to my father's house, send Lazarus to his father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify to them, lest they also come into this place of torment. So he's requesting Lazarus. Uh, he's requesting, no, I'm sorry. He's requesting Abraham to send Lazarus back to his brothers, his five brothers, to testify so they won't come to that place. And so what did Abraham say? Abraham says to him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. So let me stop right here. So the rich man requested Abraham to send Lazarus to his five brethren so they won't come to that place, that place of torment. That he won't, so they won't come to hell. They, they, he wanted Abraham to for this request, so they won't come to hell. Abraham replies, "They have Moses and the prophets." So likewise, we are in the new covenant. A person dies and goes to hell may want to request if God gives them the ability to request. Send somebody from this place to go tell my family that to testify and that so they won't come to this place. No, not only we have Moses and the prophets, but we have Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We have the gospel. We have the glad tidings. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. And no one comes to the father but by him. Abraham replies and says to him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. So they don't have ears to hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if one went to them from the dead, they will repent. He doesn't know that. He Again, he doesn't understand life. So how does he have the understanding? Just because you are in torments doesn't mean they're going to understand when they see the person rise from the dead and, and testify about the torments of hell. And he said unto him. And he's requesting, he's requesting Lazarus to go to them. Lazarus is in paradise. Lazarus is in Abraham's bosom. And so, and he said to him, Abraham says to him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they hear, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. So, when you don't understand life, there is a place for that misunderstanding. When you don't understand life and how it works, there is a place for people who have a misunderstanding of life. You don't understand life because you know not God. You don't understand life because you're not fully committed to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ like I quoted, John 14, 6 says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. He is the life. So it's Christ Jesus who gives the man of God or the woman of God understanding of life. You live life in Jesus Christ. You serve him. You are created for the glory of God. You are created for God Almighty. To worship him in spirit and in truth. To meditate on his word. So therefore you can learn and apply God's word to your life. The word of God says a word fitly spoken are like apples of gold and pictures of silver. Meaning God's word is precious and you can't, you can't get around the beauty of God's word to cleave to it. To cleave or cling to it, there's power being imparted. There's power being transmitted for you to change so that your heart can be pure before God. Jesus Christ says, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. How do you get your heart pure? By your repentance, your genuine repentance unto God, turning towards God for salvation, confessing your sins, confessing, Lord, I have sinned before you. I do I do bad things. I say bad things to people. I lie. 
I steal. I, I watch things that defile me. I want to know you. I want to have a relationship with you. Deepen my relationship in Jesus' name. And the Father was God the Father will save you. Jesus Christ will save you. I believe the Father has risen him on the third day. I believe he died for me. And I I want to be, I want him to be my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, you will be saved. That's what Jesus, that's what Paul by the Holy Ghost said in Romans chapter 10. You will be saved. And the meaning of life will be an understanding. Because now you have an understanding that God is holy and you are to be holy as he is holy, meaning separated from what the world do and say and how they think. Separated from the mindset. Separated because God is separated, but God wants you to himself. It's a very powerful verse. So yes, the pureness of heart. I'm thinking about Proverbs chapter 22, and I believe it's verse 11. Let me turn it real fast. Proverbs 22, verse 11. <clears throat> yes. This is, so Jesus Christ, let me quote that again. Jesus Christ says, bless all the pure in heart, for they will see God. That's a promise from God. That's a promise from the son of the living God. Blessed, meaning highly favored of God to you. Are the pure in heart. Those who live righteously unto God. Live holy unto God. And do whatever he says. Obey the instructions of God Almighty. And the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus says if you keep my commandments. You will abide in my love. Even as I have kept my father's commandments. And abide in his love. Then he says these things that I have spoken to you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy may be full. So the purity of heart, God, you will see God. He said, uh, the, the, uh, Solomon, the third king of Israel says in Proverbs chapter 22, he says, He that loves pureness of heart for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. The, uh, the Lord called Abraham a friend of God. So that, that first part of that verse, I'm read that again. He that loves pureness of heart, meaning you desire to be pure before God, meaning you desire to obey God and to be faithful unto the end, enduring to the end. And you love instructions. You love knowledge. Your ways are not brutish. You, you want to obey God. You worship God. That cleanses you. That sanctifies you. He that loves pureness of heart, for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. That sounds like Daniel in chapter, matter of fact, the first uh, four chapters of Daniel. So Daniel presented himself to be pure. Him and Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, they, he, they wanted to be, he wanted to be pure before the king. And so it, it, that happened. So King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and none of his magicians nor soothsayers nor astrologers can interpret the dream but the prophet Daniel. And King Nebuchadnezzar started to slew those, slew the wise men because they could not explain the dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had. But God, uh, so before I even say that, so King Nebuchadnezzar was about to kill Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. But Daniel had favor with God. And so did, he, so did Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. They had favor with God. And so he requested the, for the king to give them 10 days. And he would have an answer for the, uh, the dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had. So Daniel sought the Lord. And he says in chapter 2. You reveal the deep and secret things. You know what's in the darkness for the light dwells with you. God gave Daniel, the prophet, the interpretation for King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Let me read this verse again. He that loves pureness of heart. This is Proverbs chapter 22, verse 11. He that loves pureness of heart for the grace of his lips 
the king shall be his friend. So Daniel explained the dream in full detail from a pure heart because he sought the Lord. He sought the Lord for expounding the dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had. had. And now King Nebuchadnezzar rewards and gives Daniel uh, uh, gold and he gives him he gives him gifts and now he sits with King Nebuchadnezzar at the gate. He he sits close to King Nebuchadnezzar because of his explanation on the king of Babylon's dream. So then then you have chapter four. King Nebuchadnezzar has another dream. Now he knows that Daniel can explain the dream to him, and he explains it, but. The Puritan heart, it says this, I'm a, I have to read it again so it can be emphasized. So it says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 11, He that loves pureness of heart, for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. So now you're the king's friend. Now you are in close relationships, relationship with the king of Babylon. Your heart is pure. You have the ability to interpret dreams and visions. So what did King Nebuchadnezzar do? So he sought King Dan, not King Dan, I'm sorry. He sought the prophet Daniel for another interpretation. And when you are close with the, with the king, when you are friends with the king, now you can tell the king about his ways that are unrighteous and that the ways that offends God, he says that if you break off your sins by righteousness and your iniquity by showing mercy to the poor, it will be a lengthening of your tranquility. What does he, what is he saying? He rebuked him, but respectful. It's a respectful rebuke because he knows he's the king of Babylon. He knows that king. Uh, he knows that the prophet Daniel can interpret the dreams, and he did it. The second time, this time, you no, know, the word was true. Daniel explains the dream. These things will, is, are going to happen to you when your pride is lifted up. So he is, when he explains in chapter five to Belshazzar that he says, uh, he says, your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, when he was, when his heart was lifted up in his mind, hardened in pride. He was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him and he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beast and his dwellings with, with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven until he knew that the most high God ruled in the kingdom of men and he appoints over whomsoever he will. And so then he explains the, the the writing on the wall to Belshazzar. So Daniel, so he was, I say that to say this, according to the scripture in Proverbs chapter 22, 22 verse 11, he that loves pureness of heart for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. The king shall be his friend. So Belshazzar, he didn't get a chance to be Daniel's friend because he knew these things that happened to his father. Or his grandfather, pretty much. So yeah, the word of God is true. Your the purity of heart. You understand life with a pure heart because God gives it to you. He gives you the understanding because God's wisdom is more powerful than man's wisdom. His ways, his thoughts are higher than our ways and thoughts, as it says in Isaiah. So by by the spirit of of the Lord in Solomon, he says it in Proverbs chapter 3, by wisdom he found the earth and by his understanding the heavens were established and by his knowledge the depths were broken up and the clouds dropped down to dew. So God formed the things by his wisdom is more in depth and powerful and impacting than man's thoughts. God's wisdom formed things when he spoke it. In his mind, his wisdom, God's mind, nobody can search out God's mind. The man of God has the mind of Christ. The man of God has the ways of Jesus Christ to live like Jesus, to walk and to grow 
in the faith, living like Jesus Christ. We preach the, the gospel, the power of God unto salvation to all that believe from the Jew first and also to the Greek. You are created for the glory of God so that you can live, eat life in newness. That's what Paul said in Romans. I believe that's chapter 8, if I'm not mistaken. The newness of life, you have that granted to you. So eternal life, Jesus Christ, again, he explains in John chapter 17 when he was praying to the Father. He says, this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and, the, and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. That's eternal life. Eternal life is greater than this life. You don't have you die without eternal life in Jesus, you will receive eternal damnation, eternal punishment, capital punishment. And that's hell, that's the torments. The rich man is still there. The rich man is in torments along with those who died in unrighteousness. Those who don't understand life, you are created for a purpose. You are made in God's image and after his likeness. And you are created to serve the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He will cleanse you from all sin. It doesn't matter what you did in, that was bad. You, the, nothing that you did that God cannot wash you from. The word of God says in 1 John Chapter 3, it says, now that we are sons of God, and it does not yet appear that what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we will be like him. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, who is, who was, and who is to come, the almighty. He's almighty God. And he says, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walks naked and they see his shame. What does that mean? When, man, when the man of God is born again and living and walking in the newness of life in Christ, he is not to go back into the world. Those who backslide, that is them saying, I forget God. I want to live my way. I have my own understanding. I want to do what they are doing. I don't want to obey God. That's what you're saying before God. You may say that's harsh, but how do you know the person's heart? I don't now have to I don't have to be a prophet or a son of the prophet to know who your God is. The true and living God redeems that if you go, you can be a backslider. If you are a backslider, you can you go back to Jesus Christ. There's hope in Jesus. Renounce, forsake the evil way. Forsake the forward mouth. Hate it. Hate evil. Fear God. Keep his commandments. Solomon said, for this is the duty of all men. For, for God will bring every work with every secret thing into judgment, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You're going to stand before God one day. Please respect the fact that you are going to die one day. And if you die without Jesus Christ, there is no hope for you. No one can save you out of hell. No one can pull you out. No one is going to back you up saying he was innocent. No. Your righteousness, your own righteousness, righteousness are as filthy rags. The word of God says there's none good, there's none that does good. No, not one. The, the, the rich young ruler came to Jesus and says, good master, how can I inherit the, uh, the kingdom of God? He, he, Jesus Christ replies and says, why do you call me good? There's only one that is good. That's God. Little that he knew that Jesus Christ is God. But he told him. I have. Um, he says. You have heard of the commandments. You shall not steal. You should not kill. Honor your mother and father. Um, do not bear a false witness. He, he names the ten commandments. The rich man. Not the rich man. I'm sorry. The rich young ruler. 
he he thought he understood life by his by saying to Jesus Christ that I have kept all these things from my youth. What do I lack? Jesus Christ, who loved on him and says, there is one thing that you lack. Go sell all your possessions and give to the poor, distribute it to the poor. Pick up your cross and follow me and you will have the true riches. The rich man did not do so. The, the young, I'm sorry, not the rich man. The rich young ruler did not do so. The young rich ruler did not do so. He did not understand life. He thought he did because of the possessions he had. He didn't want to do that because his possessions were his, was his God. His own heart for the love of his riches and wealth was his God. He didn't want the true riches. Jesus Christ, the Lord, gave him the option, made it, made it available for him to take, to make a decision. He walked away sorrowful. That defines a person not understanding life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, I am getting out of the weather. So yeah, Jesus Christ, <clears throat> Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by Him. <clears throat> Excuse my voice here. So yeah, He He walked away sorrowful. <clears throat> and then Jesus Christ turns to His disciples and says, "How easy it is for a rich man to enter into heaven." It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven. You think of a celebrity, it's hard for the world celebrities to get saved. Why do I say that? I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm saying it's hard. Um, Let's just say, I'm going to throw somebody out there. Let's just say Jay-Z got saved, truly got saved. Do you understand that he cannot go to a mega church because how he's going to be held accountable? Who's going to cast all those all those devils out of him? Who's going to do that? Uh, Sean Carter will have to renounce some things. There'll be some many different deliveries, deliverance services for that person. He will have to forsake everything. He will have to forsake his own lifestyle. He will have to renounce all the music that he has did in his lifetime and to turn to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said it plainly. It is easier for a rich man to enter. I'm sorry. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye, go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven, enter into the kingdom of God. Yes, you have to deny yourself. That goes for anybody who wants to come to Jesus Christ and be saved, to live holy as he is holy. Your, your communication with God is your prayer and your in the presence of God. To worship God in spirit and in truth and to meditate on his word day and night so that you can be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season and his leaf also will not wither and whatsoever that person does he will prosper the ungodly are not so but are like the chaff that the wind dries away the ungodly will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly will perish. Meaning the way of the ungodly will not make it in. The way of the ungodly does not understand life. Naturally speaking, to define that, what is life? Life is space between birth and death. Between birth and death are decisions, are decisions to choose life in Jesus. 
or life in the world, the devil, your flesh, your heart. To choose Christ after death is everlasting life with Christ. For the world who chooses death, they die twice. There is called the second death. That's in Revelation. You need to be born again. You must be born again to spend forever with God. You must be holy as he is holy to forsake the world. Turn from the sitcoms. Turn from the ungodly music. Turn from the past. Turn from nostalgia. Turn from your own understanding. Turn to Christ Jesus. Turn from the black and miles. Turn from the drunkenness. Turn from the ungodly holidays. Serve Christ Jesus. Depart from evil. The, the word of God says those who name the name of Jesus depart from iniquity. Yes. Those who name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. What is iniquity, brother Joseph? Iniquity is you working evil and doing evil every day. Yes, that's what it says. That's what is defined of that. And so, there are many examples. Stephen rebuked those accuser of his, saying he twists up the law of Moses. They did not understand life. What did Stephen do in Acts chapter 7? Stephen took them through, took them through doctrine. All the way back to Abraham, all the way back to Moses, through the captivity, all the way to Jesus Christ. And, and they was all listening and giving their ear to what he was saying. Yet they may not have been able to understand. But until he said, you stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do you. When they heard that, that's when they stoned him. That's when they gnashed at his teeth, gnashed at him with their teeth. They hated him without a cause, just like how they uh, crucified our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They hated Christ without a cause. The Pharisees hated Christ because Jesus Christ revealed the hearts of many as was prophesied of him. Where do you stand in this life? When you stand before God, where do you think you will go afterwards? In this life, when you hear truth of the gospel, when you hear the preacher, whether it's on the Facebook platform, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube or a street preacher, or you just visit a church and you hear truth from a pastor, and it's the truth of the gospel, receive it. Because you don't know when you're going to die. If you die without Jesus, there's eternal damnation. If you die with, if you get saved and commit to Commit your mind, commit your heart, and commit your life to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. God will save you, and then you obey and be faithful to, to the end. The just will live by faith. You'll be justified with the Father, and you endure to the end. What are you enduring? The oppressions of life, the tribulations of life, the, the hardness of this life. But you have joy. You have the Holy Ghost. And God comforts those. He comfort, comforts those, those who fear him. Yes. Jesus Christ is Lord. Repent and believe on Jesus Christ. And get baptized every one of you. And you will be saved. Endure to the end. I'm Brother Joseph Herbert. This is for his glory.